Okay, hi! I'm Cherry and you've stumbled upon my channel and today I'm going to be talking about the best and most surprising books I read in 2020. I've managed to read quite a bit of 2020 releases last year, but here's the usual disclaimer that these books aren't necessarily published in 2020, these are just books that I read in 2020. With that said, I have 9 books to talk about which I've divided into 3 categories with 3 books each. One is Honorable Mentions. 2 is most surprising, and 3 is the absolute best books that I've read last year. Let's start with the lovely honorable mentions. These 3 books are books I hear literally no one in the book community to talk about, but I personally enjoyed. I thought I'd take this opportunity to share them with all of you and maybe encourage you to give them the love that they deserve. The first book that I have is The Young Wives Club by Julie Pennell. I read this book early in 2020 and whenever I see it on my shelf, it never fails to bring a smile to my face. I got this book from a local book sale and bought it on a whim because it sounded really interesting but the only reason I picked it up when I did was because I think I used a random generator for a readathon and this book came up as the result. The Young Wives Club is set in Louisiana where love happens sometime around high school. It follows four girlfriends navigating life, love, and heartbreak together. Laura is married to their high school star quarterback. Madison is waiting for her bad boy musician boyfriend to commit to her. Claire is trying to be the perfect wife to her well-respected pastor husband. And Gabriel is engaged to the son of a prominent congressman who she has been lying to about literally everything in her life all this time. When I checked out the Goodreads page again for this book, I saw that I gave this book 4.5 stars. I was surprised to have enjoyed it as much as I did, but I absolutely adore this book. And I pretty much flew through it. It's really short too. And it definitely didn't read like a debut novel. I was so invested in the problems of all these girls like they were my own best friends. If there's one thing I love more than angst and romance, it's friendships that you root for. I'll definitely be picking up Julie Pinnell's second book, Louisiana Lucky, which came out last year. And I am so excited because that is another friendship story that I am absolutely sold. The second book also came as a surprise and that's Stuck on You by Portia McIntosh. This book came out in September 2020 and I read it in late November, I think, because I was beginning to be in a festive mood. Initially, I only had Portia McIntosh's The Plus One packed on my TBR, but I saw this book and because the holidays were coming up during that time, chose to pick this one up first and I did not regret it one bit. In Stuck on You, we follow Sadie, who works as a personal assistant for the great and famous photographer Damien Banks. From organizing his dry cleaning, to buying gifts for his family, to even breaking up with his girlfriends, Sadie does it all. Sadie finds a confident and a potential love interest in Adam, who she shares her desk with at work. The only problem is, they've never met and have only been exchanging post-it notes throughout this whole time. Could a post-it note really lead to love? This book is set throughout the course of the holiday season and we follow Sadie and Damien as they spend Christmas and New Year together. My tip is pick this up during the holidays because it will definitely have you feeling festive. They do a lot of holiday activities and it was just so much fun to read or maybe I just really like stories where couples do holiday shit together. Maybe I'm lonely. My only complaint is that the summary is a little misleading because most of the actual story actually doesn't have much to do with the post-it exchanges. The post-it exchanges were just scattered throughout the book almost at random intervals. <laughs> but like honestly, whatever. All is forgiven because this book super fun. It also won my heart because it has one of my all-time favorite tropes, which is friends to lovers. Sadie and Damien's banter was just so cute and probably my favorite aspect of the book. Portia McIntosh has 
a lot more other rom-coms on Kindle Unlimited and I'll definitely be reading some of them when I am in a fluffy mood which is rarely but you know at least I'll be ready. <laughs> then the final honorable mention is Before You Say I Do by Claire Lydon. This one was one of my most anticipated 2020 releases and also one of the first ebooks I read when I acquired my Kindle. The realization that I can now read all the lesbian fiction I want thanks to the acquisition of digital copies pretty much gave me a reason to live. So the premise, what happens when you fall for your bridesmaid. That had me sold from the very second I found out this book was coming into existence last year. Abby Porter is about to get married to his perfect fiance Marcus. He knows how stressed she is when it comes to wedding preparations, so what does he do? Marcus, out of the goodness of his heart, oh sweet Marcus, hired a professional bridesmaid. When Abby meets Jordan, the bridesmaid for hire, she finds it hard to breathe and even harder to look away. The wedding is weeks away. Will Abby make it to the altar? This book was fan-fucking-tastic. I have a penchant for drama and anything that can turn the peace into pure and utter chaos. So you could only imagine how much fun I had reading about Abby and Jordan's inner monologues as they work out their growing feelings, the push and pull of their entire relationship, had me in pieces up until the end. I am just obsessed with this book and I'm definitely picking up more from Claire Lydon for sure. I've got my sights set on You're My Kind or Twice in a Lifetime, both of which also have my other favorite trope, which is second chance romance and I am so excited. Now let's move on to the three most surprising books of 2020. These books, for one reason or another, have managed to surprise me a fuck ton, but in the best way possible. The first book is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. I was really <laughs> sad to know that this book had a lot of mixed reviews because like, for example, while Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction loved it, Cece from Problems of a Book Nerd hated it. <laughs> I personally ended up loving it more than I thought I would. This was originally a random pick for the Hocus Pocus readathon last October. The prompt was to read a book about powerful witches and I was browsing my Goodreads for like a book that would fulfill that prompt and then I was like, you know what, yeah whatever, this will do. <laughs> but holy fuck, I thought this was really fucking good. It combines modern witchcraft with ancient Celtic mythology and it also has a sapphic romance between two witches. Basically, it's gay and involves a string of murders, and that's pretty much everything I could ever want in the media I consume. In Witches of Ash and Ruin, we follow a coven of witches in a conservative Irish town. A rival coven with a history of black magic arrives in town, bringing with them premonitions of death. Then a witch turns up murdered, and then another. And basically, the two covens have to work together to protect their own covens and find the witch killer. Let me just say that I did not expect this book to be as dark as it was, and I honestly love that. <laughs> it turned very unsettling corners, so maybe look up trigger warnings before proceeding with this one. The ones I can remember are homophobia and public outing, which was discussed in the very beginning of the book. Violence, physical and emotional abuse, and self-harm and blood magic. I loved almost everything about this book. The only thing I found iffy was that it had so many point of views. It kind of lessened the mystery of the entire ordeal and some POVs just really weren't necessary. But other than that, I think this was a pretty solid debut. By the way, Maynard King from The Rival Coven is officially one of my book girlfriends now. Okay, the next book in this category is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. I also read this book for spooky season last year, but for the Spooktober readathon. This one, I think, was for the read a book with a black cover prompt, and this was the first book that came to mind. It was perfect timing too, because at the time, 
Netflix came out with a movie adaptation. Sadly, the movie was absolutely terrible and a total waste of my fucking time. But the appearance of Tony Collette made a total of 10 minutes bearable. Anyway, this book was a wild fucking ride and I know I say that a lot, but this book literally felt like a fever dream. You start with a couple and they're on their way to meet the boy's parents at a secluded farm. All the while, the girl is thinking about ending things. The beginning can be a tad slow because in the first few chapters, we followed the couple's road trip to the countryside. So it's mostly just conversations between the two of them because what else can you do in like a fucking car? And they're deep ass conversations and even their talk about the most random and mundane shit can fuck you up. By the final few chapters, however, I think I was borderline having an anxiety attack. <laughs> I was so close to standing and jumping on the bed as I read because I was so nervous about everything that was happening. Some parts can be confusing though, but then the end hits you like a fucking train, but you didn't see it coming and you're like, fuck, okay. That suddenly makes a lot of sense. <laughs> just, just, just read it. Please, re please read it. It messed me up and I still think about it sometimes. Don't bother with the movie though, because I swear to God, the book ending and the movie ending are completely different. The movie made me so damn angry because the book was so good. Make of that what you will. The last, most surprising book of 2020 is One Day in December by Josie Silver. This was the last book I read in 2020. And boy, did I end the year with a fucking bang. <laughs> but that was like before I got consumed by Stardew Valley, so like, you know. I read this book on my Kindle and it was so good, I actually might buy a physical copy so I can reread it through the holiday season and maybe annotate it because I like pain. <laughs> Angst is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Basically, we follow Laurie who falls in love at first sight with a stranger she makes eye contact with at a bus stop. The bus drives away and she spends an entire year looking for the stranger. When she finally gives up, her best friend, who was supposed to be helping her look for him, introduces Laurie to her new boyfriend. And naturally, this guy had to be the guy from the bus stop. This book takes place in a span of 10 years. So you can only imagine the missed chances and other shit that this book has to offer. One Day in December is on here because, let me tell you, I cannot even begin to guess where this story was going. It went in directions I did not expect in the least. This book was marketed as a heartwarming holiday read, and that's also what a bunch of my favorite booktubers have been saying about this book, but it's it's really not. Do not let that shit fool you because this book is heart-wrenching, pure angst. I never cry when reading. And let me tell you, I teared up. I fucking teared up. That shit hurted, fam. It hurted so much. This book started out pretty solid. The guy appears like a chapter or two in, so shit ensues early on. Then the middle, honestly, got a little weird but then it picked right back up at around the halfway point regardless it's worth a read in my humble opinion pick it up if you want pain because here in this channel we love that <laughs> we are almost done my friends just three more books left on the list now it's finally time for drumroll please that does not sound like a drum. <laughs> now it's time for the best books I read in 2020. These books gave me a massive book hangover and I think about them at least, you know, 10 times a day or so. No big deal. The first book in this category is Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. Oh my god. Okay, first I gotta say what this is about in case anyone hasn't heard of it, but 
Rich People Problems is the third and final installment in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy. And if you've never heard of the CRA series, or at least the movie, are you living under a rock? <laughs> Dude, this book went places. I don't want to spoil too much because even though the second and third book follows a bunch of new people other than the ones in the first book, there's still a connecting storyline. Starting from the first book is definitely a must if you want to read it. Otherwise, you'll be missing on a lot of really important and frankly quite hilarious context clues. Let me just summarize the entire series by saying that Kevin Kwan has such a flair for drama. You think being white can be dramatic? Try being Asian. <laughs> Gather your Asian relatives around and it's pure and utter chaos. In this book alone, shit ensues from the very first chapter. <laughs> Things go downhill and then up and then down and then up and like, you know, you get the point. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is that rich people problems is a very satisfying conclusion to the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy. I didn't even hesitate in giving this book 5 stars. The first book I gave 4 stars, the second book I gave 3 stars. But this book, 5 stars all around. 5 fucking stars. Honestly, I'm at the point where I would just point out to every character and concluded arc and go, you get a 5 star, you get a 5 star, you get a 5 star. Definitely picking up Sex and Vanity from Kevin Kwan. Hope. Hopefully this year, I want to buddy read it with my cousin, but we'll see if we can do that because she's busy and I have no life. I'm honestly so glad that the Crazy Rich Asian series got the hype that it deserves because Hollywood needs Asian stories starring actual Asians, you know, P.S. Astrid and Charlie for the fucking win. Literally the only straight couple that deserves rights. The next book is simply one that I could not stop talking about for days. I think I talked about it endlessly in my weekly reading blogs back when I was still blogging. And it's Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. I buddy read this book with my best friend last year. And we're supposed to buddy read Girls of Storm and Shadow, the second book this year. But due to unforeseen circumstances, it has not happened. <laughs> anyway, Girls of Paper and Fire is about these paper girls who serve as the king's concubines. It is the highest honor that they could ever hope for. Every year, eight girls are chosen. But one year, Lei, with her gold eyes and natural beauty, became the ninth girl. I don't really know what happens in the second book. I didn't read the summary. I just kind of want to go into it blind because the fucking cliffhanger in the first book tore me to pieces. <laughs> also, Forbidden Romance. That is the shit I screech for. I'm not going to tell you which girl Lei develops a romance with because that was honestly part of the fun. Lei literally has to live with eight other girls. And even though some of the others are actual stuck-up bitches, it was fun going, is she the love interest? She's kind of cute. Is she the one? I hope the fuck not. But basically, it's a love story between the king's concubines. And I have to warn you now though, this book has intense trigger warnings for sexual assault, which is an ongoing theme throughout most of the book, and violence including one scene at the very beginning involving a dog. Just be wary because I did not expect the animal cruelty bit to happen, but it happened. Other than that, this book is amazing. The world building is superb. I love the idea that humans, like actual humans, have become the paper case, aka the lowest class, and that the uppercase have evolved to have animal features like feathers or scales or horns. I thought that was really fucking neat. I am so excited to get the Girls of Storm and Shadow. So Peach, my best friend, the love of my life, if you're watching this, can we 
please. <laughs> I mean, also, the third book, Girls of Fate and Fury, comes out in November. So we really need to get on to reading the second book. I am begging you at this point. Finally, the best book I read in 2020. Everyone will think I'm a heathen, but it needs to officially be said. Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. This book, simply put, and to say the least, is fucking painful. <laughs> Reading this hurt like a motherfucker. For those of you who don't know yet, Forbidden is about Maya and Lokan, and they fall in love. The only problem is that they're brother and sister. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone outside and in between. This book is about incest, and I do not regret it one bit. <laughs> Tabitha Suzuma just has a way with words. The writing flowed so smoothly, and it was just so beautiful. I actually have one of her other books, A Note on Madness, on my TBR, and I'm excited for more pain. But anyway, I digress. We are on the best of best, after all. <laughs> the hardest part about reading this book <laughs> is knowing the entire relationship is both gross and very illegal in their country, but still rooting for both characters. <laughs> There's just Lokan and Maya are just very likable and they lived an extremely hard life. They pretty much acted like parental figures to their younger siblings. They went through so much pain, okay? And all you want is just for them to end up happy. Even if it meant that happiness involves... You know? <laughs> okay. You won't know. Hopefully you won't know. <laughs> but just read the fucking book. Please, read it. Read it so you'll get it. If not for the plot, then for the writing style, because it is absolutely stunning. Gorgeous, beautiful, perfect. Then, the ending. <laughs> I did not expect this book to end the way it did. Okay, yeah. okay, you know what? Okay, okay, you know what? Let me take that back. I did not expect anything. <laughs> Because you just can't expect anything happy with this kind of story. Like, the journey scooped out my insides. And by the time I'm on the last page, I was merely a hollow shell of my former self. <laughs> you don't understand. You can't understand. You can't possibly understand the pain unless you fucking read this book. You might go on Goodreads and be surprised to see all the five-star reviews and its magnificent four-star average rating. But let me tell you, this book deserves it. It deserves all the good things, just like Lucan and Maya deserve all the good things. It's just that good. I almost cried. <laughs> Hurt like a bitch and almost cried but yes i encourage you to read it if you haven't you know please please pick it up just please by the way this copy is my best friend's copy and i have half a mind not to return it to her <laughs> she hasn't read it yet but she's also a heathen so and those are all the best books i have read in 2020. why am i doing this video very late you ask well <laughs> it's because i I'm fucking useless. But anyway, I hope you do pick up at least one of these books. Tell me if you like them as much as I did or absolutely detested your reading experience. I would love to know your thoughts either way. My socials are all linked down below so you can message me and we can scream at each other. But that is all I have for you today. This has already been a very lengthy video and before I was about to make the outro, my memory card got full yet again. <laughs> I am sensing a pattern here, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! God, I can't talk. I cannot talk.